Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Uncle Pookie's Barbecue. I'm your host, Uncle Pookie, and uh, today we are uh, doing the recipe of the season. <laughs> uh, it's getting close to Thanksgiving and uh, it is turkey time. So um, again, I'm going to stick with my uh, current series of keeping these recipes real simple and easy to do. Any backyard cook can do this. Uh, but with this, um, there's plenty of uh, smoked turkey recipes and videos online right now. I'm kind of going a different direction. I'm going to try another method. I've done this before um, when I've oven cooked uh, turkey. And uh, I'm going to try this with a, um, a rib rack that will reverse over for a roasting uh, rack. Uh, I've had it for a while and been thinking about doing this. I'm going to smoke my turkey upside down um, and I'm also going to take a knife and put some slits and penetrate some of that membrane that's inside the cavity uh, that um, uh, separates the, the white meat from the inside of the cavity and I'm going to smoke it with uh, some extra seasoning inside the cavity and a stick of butter uh, in there and of course it'll be upside down so as that butter melts it should, in theory, just flood that uh, white breast meat uh, with a lot of juice and a lot of uh, moisture so that when I come back in to carve it up, uh, it should be very moist. As we all know, uh, turkeys and chickens in general, the poultry, uh, the white meat is, can, is notorious for drying out. So there's a lot of different methods. We brine, we inject. Uh, I'm not against doing either one. Typically, I'll brine turkeys for 12 to 24 hours um, before I smoke them. But this is what I was thinking about as far as maybe, you know, someone's in a rush or I know I'm, I don't know how many times I have uh, brought a turkey out of the freezer a little too late, maybe a day too late. And when I'm getting ready to brine or inject it, it's still got some frozen portions that uh, just don't take to the injection well or don't don't dissolve fully in the brine. Uh, and with injecting, I've had a few times where the injection didn't necessarily spread throughout the meat. And I've had pockets of injection flavor uh, that's really, really strong when you get done cooking your, your bird and you've got just a pocket of injection and flavor right there concentrated. Uh, it tends to kind of ruin that little section. So uh, this is just a little experiment to say, hey, you know, if you're in a rush, you didn't get to marinate, you didn't get to inject, you didn't get to embrine, what can you do to keep that white meat from drying out? And I think this is going to work well. So uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for uh, trimming and seasoning and then the, the results of this test. Um, please, if you like the video, subscribe, like, uh, share the video with friends or family. Uh, the subscription doesn't make you purchase anything or get your name and number. All it's doing is uh, keeping you on the list to update you whenever or notify you when we do update the uh, page with a new video. So we're coming towards the end of this first series of the easy, simple, uh, everyday barbecue. Uh, the next series will get to be a little more meat intermediate. We'll, we'll concentrate more on flavors and techniques. And then the third series will be uh, uh, more detail than that, of course, uh, a little more involved and a little more um, uh, out of the box thinking as far as some of these recipes go. So again, thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a great Thanksgiving and uh, stay tuned. We will get started right now. All right, so we have our 12 pound turkey. <laughs> now I'm gonna try something different on this one. Normally what I'll do is I'll take this out, um, clean up any excess skin or anything, which I am going to do here in just a minute. But I would, um, I'm not a big fan of injection. I will inject on certain things, but for family eating uh, turkeys and chickens, I like to brine. I would rather let this sit in the fridge overnight in a brine or some sort of marinade for anywhere from 4 to 12 to even 24 hours just to let it absorb as much moisture as it's going to. I've had um, meat where, especially poultry, where I have injected and instead of spreading through the meat, it has just stayed in one spot. 
and then when your final product you're carving into the meat and you have this little pocket of injection or brine uh, or injection I should say that is real strong and that area of meat is real strong with that injection so brining to me is just the more laid back easy way to do it but in this time I want to try something a little bit different what I'm going to do see here I have a rib rack you put the ribs in these each one of these slots and you can do six racks of ribs at one time this is also made to turn over and you can put a roast like a pork loin or a, um, a prime rib roast something like that in here and to hold it up what I'm going to do this is your top side of your turkey here what I'm gonna do is tie this thing up put it upside down in the roasting rack and I'm also going to when I open this bird up and start cutting on it you'll be able to get in the cavity and I'll take my knife and from the cavity I'm gonna cut little slits on the inside between the rib bones place a little extra seasoning but also a stick of butter I want to see how much moisture I can get in this breast meat which typically it can turn out dry but with it being upside down and moisture sitting in the cavity on the back side of that breast meat and the skin kind of holding in some of that I'm just gonna do a little experiment and see uh, if it will remain moist without brining without injecting as you can see it's still wrapped up so um, we're gonna do a little experiment I know this this first series of my videos have been more backyard simple easy to do this may turn out very easy the only thing um, money wise that you would need a little out of the ordinary is the rib rack and that's really not that out of the ordinary so we're gonna jump in here and go ahead I put the turkey in this little half pan just to kind of keep some of the moisture out of it uh, I, from getting everywhere um, cutting board just in case I do have to take something out and, and cut on it but I just want to see um, like I said it may turn out that this turns to be a very very moist uh, bird doing it this way and if that eliminates the need for hours of brining and marinade or injection uh, that could be very neat so we're gonna give it a try and see uh, and if it fails then uh, you'll see me fail the first time and you'll know uh, here in the next couple of weeks when it becomes Thanksgiving and you're getting ready to do your own bird uh, don't try this at home <laughs> we'll just stick with the uh, the brining or the injecting if you know the the little injection kits you can get from uh, the grocery store great and again there's nothing wrong with injecting um, I've just had a couple of instances with the uh, injection collecting in one spot that I prefer to brine and uh, just found it it seems to be a little bit easier on me to do it that way so anyway we're just going to try this here get the I'm going to take the little, it comes with the little leg hanger, and this time it did come apart. I was going to say, sometimes it doesn't want to come come off that easy, but uh, this time it popped right off. I'm going to tie those legs back here in just a little bit. Uh, this is the part that's a little bit difficult. This underside here has a hook that will hold the, uh, the, the bird together a little bit. I am going to have to use the... Uh, cutting board here I'll just use the pan and drain out some of this thawed liquid here blood and water and all the good stuff and of course as you know you've got your bag of giblets and your turkey neck and all the extra stuff that a lot of folks like to to use to make your stuffing your dressing and all that well I'm not going to do all that this time. So, what you do though, let me move this out of the way. Make sure Daniel can see. <laughs> now, and we're going to take our little turkey popper out too. We don't have any need for that. We'll have the. What we'll do, we're, I like to just trim any of this excess skin off. Uh, like I say all the time, the more work you do on this end, the less work you got to do to be able to eat. So, uh, I like to just trim any of this excess skin off here on the back side and in this situation the more you can get out of here the better because I'm going to need access 
to the inside of the cavity here. Some more, more innards and stuff here. Now we're going to tie all this back up here before we put the bird on, but just want to look around sometimes you get a lot of neck skin a uh, little bit of just leftover pieces of cartilage from the neck or anything like that just you know like i said i just like to take a little extra time to clean things up make it look nicer i don't like cutting towards myself so i'm gonna be real careful here but um again just little things you could do here and there that make that final presentation nicer um, now, a lot of people have asked me in the past, you know, they like turkey, but they don't know how to get any seasoning to the, this meat. And that is part of what the injection is going to do. If you do go that route, you can inject into certain areas to help get flavor in there. And the brine would do that as well. You know, it's going to seep into all these open areas um, where it can get that flavor down into the meat. What I like to do, though, you can separate, there's a little membrane that holds the skin to the meat. I don't know if I can really catch that in the camera real well, but I just take my fingers and pull against. I don't want to tear this skin. I want to leave it on there to, again, kind of hold that, that juice and that moisture in this meat as it's sitting in this roast pan upside down. But you can carefully work your hand underneath between the skin and the muscle fibers of the meat and work it out, work it loose, so that you can stretch it back, and you can season this this breast meat um, from the inside, and then pull the skin back over it to kind of protect it. And of course, we're going to season real heavy inside the cavity of this turkey, so that um, as any meat or as any juice and butter melts into the meat, that seasoning is going to go with it. So. Again, we're just, I'm just taking anything that's connecting and something stringy like that. I can cut it off and away completely. But I'm just going to pull this back where I can expose that breast meat completely and then season away. I'll grab a paper towel here. I'm going to put two seasons on it. I do want a little bit more seasoning and more spice to this bird. So I'm going to put my all-purpose, my uh, salt and pepper love. All, I'm going to go across the outside, but I'm, I'm especially right now working on this breast meat. We'll put a little layer here right on top of that. And I'm also going to use some of this Tony Sacheries. This is the more spice season. This is a little bit spicier, spicier uh, Cajun seasoning. Uh, I'm going to put that on the inside in here as well because I want a little more kick. It is a salty product, so I'm not going to layer it on real heavy, but I do want some of the other Cajun spices in here. So put that in here. And then again, I can flap that back over. And then when we put it in the rib rack, tied up and it's sitting upside down, uh, again, it doesn't have a, too far to go. So uh, that skin is going to be able to protect that meat, keep the, the moisture from getting away from us there. So either way, I'm just going through here as we, don't really see any other areas that need to be trimmed. Take these scraps and put them over here. And again, what I'm going to do here in a minute is tie the legs together and also tuck these wings up underneath so that, like I said, when I've got it upside down, we're not going to lose much moisture at all. But I'm going to cut the side just a little bit. Like I said, kind of go through... This is an experiment, so I'm, I'm going to check it out here and see, but try to find these rib bones and just poke through down into the, the breast meat without going all the way through. And I'm doing this, I don't know, like I said, it's hard to show you here, doing this, poking down into this section of the, the breast meat so that all that juice and butter is collecting there. It'll seep into the breast meat. Um, so I'm just going to poke a few a few slots in here. Sorry, I can't really show this to you on camera, but I just want to let you know what I'm doing to kind of moisturize this, this breast meat that tends to dry out some as you're cooking. Um, 
I want it to be as moist as possible and like I said if this little trick works to save you a few hours from the the brine and then again save you from any pockets of injection that may may come in to ruin a little section here and I'm just feeling with the tip of this blade any soft spots between the bones where I can get some moisture to seep in like I said into this breast meat so we've gotten that done and I'm gonna run my knife blade across there too because there's some there's some bone but there's some skin and some connective tissues in here too that may kind of hold moisture and if I can break through that barrier with a little bit then that's gonna be a good thing this is gonna be on the smoker for four or five hours so it's going to have plenty of time to seep on in there. So again, let me just get a clean hand here. Move our knife out of the way. And I'm going to put a little bit more of my all-purpose. I'll put a good bit of it down in the cavity, like I said. But I'm going to coat the whole thing because as this skin gets dark, it, it there are some really good spots of this turkey skin that I know a lot of my family fight over when it's all said and done so I'm gonna just put a nice little light coat on it and then I'm gonna go back over it with this Cajun seasoning so get the wings and the legs and then probably go back over it again here shortly but we're gonna come through here real quick get a piece of meat twine turkey twine as we used to call it and Cross these legs, tie them up real tight so they'll stay out of the way and also hopefully help to contain these juices. Keep everything high and tight there. And then, like I said, we're going tuck those wings in that's not really too big of an ordeal on that end I'm gonna put another coat of this Cajun seasoning over it and the good thing about that skin when you've got it loose like that you can go back over and reposition it in a couple of different ways get it I'm going to put some in that cavity there. Like I said, as this butter melts, I want it to get all that in there. And that seasoning is just going to melt in with the butter. We get ready to throw this on the smoker here in just a minute. We'll have it resting upside down. So kind of get those wings tucked in there. This little roasting rack is going to be good as far as keeping everything together. And we can cut this excess string off. There we go. Cut that out of the way. And now for the final act, we will put the stick of butter. I've also done this the way I originally started cooking turkeys in a roasting pan, bigger pan than this half pan, but this is what I would do. I would put a stick of butter on the inside here with a bottle of Italian dressing and then basically put it in a in a pan upside down but I didn't care about the skin and wasn't worried about how it turned out because we weren't going to eat it but we wanted moist meat all the way through the white meat and the dark meat so I put it in the roasting pan and then cover it in full where as the butter melted as the Italian dressing uh, steamed in I mean, the whole thing was just, it was phenomenal, the amount of moisture. It was basically just soaking in its own juices and the butter and Italian dressing. So that is one way to do it, but we're talking about doing this on the smoker. So uh, we're going to have this here real quick. I noticed a spot of mist with the seasoning. This way we're going to get that good smoky skin to finish up all the way around and hopefully like I said we'll have good juicy breast meat from this butter uh, soaking into the breast meat from the inside towards the skin the skin's gonna hold most all that moisture in so uh, looking good I'm, I'm thinking this is gonna turn out real real well the smoker should be the temp now 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this back in a pan, take it out to the smoker, and we'll get ready to go. Stay tuned. All right, just to kind of go over this again, I know I've done this in a couple of videos, but what I'm doing when I'm when I'm getting ready, to, when I'm loading my fire basket, um, and I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but there's a couple of chunks of wood right there, and I've got some leftover uh, lump charcoal in the bottom of this that didn't burn from a previous cook. So I use that, and if I have to add more, I will, but I use that leftover in a light, just basically create a light layer on the bottom. That is for the startup of the fire. You can see my, my lightning nugget there in the bottom corner. I do like to light from the bottom and with the square, um, even on a round basket, I still want to light from one edge or one section off to the side. I don't like starting in the middle and building up and out in all directions. So I start from a corner, from an edge, from the bottom, and again with the charcoal, I like to have layers of charcoal and wood. So I've got charcoal across the top and then a layer of wood. I've actually got five little fist sized chunks, one in each corner and then one in the middle. And then a light layer of leftover charcoal and some fresh charcoal on the very bottom. So that's going to give me a mixture of smoke and heat throughout the cook. Um, since we're doing this turkey, uh, I'm not going to wrap it up. I may put a little foil over the top of the bird just to kind of keep it from getting too dark. But I'm not, um, I'm not going to wrap it completely. So I want smoke going throughout this cook. Um, and again, I mean, it's, it's still, it's just going to create for an even smoke throughout uh, the entire cook. So that's the way I'm setting up my fire basket for this cook. All right, being the... Uh one man show here. I'm going to have to show you this before I put it on the smoker. But I've got two temp probes. I've got the green one here in the dark meat, which of course this is upside down, but I've, I've went from inside the cavity I felt in and found the meat of the leg. So that's what I was looking for there. This blue one is actually going down, kind of hard to show, but it is going down into the breast meat. Again, I, I felt in from the inside and probed around until I found that I was into the breast meat but not touching a bone. That's an important step to remember when you're putting a probe into a piece of meat. You don't want it touching a bone. You're going to get a bad reading. So depending on where you're, what temperature you're monitoring, whether it be the white meat or the dark meat, you want to make sure you want to put it in there and kind of feel around and make sure you're not touching a bone. One of the neat things about this uh, tap cue uh, thermometer system not only are the ends of the probes, the handle ends, color-coded, but the plug end is as well. So from the outside, I can remember, okay, green was port one, I'll see that that's plugged into the unit, but I can remember the green is in the dark meat, the blue is in the white meat, so forth and so on. So that is a neat feature that they do here. Uh, let me go ahead and get this on the smoker. We were reading about 275, so temperature's a little hotter. I'm wanting to stay closer to 250, but uh, uh, we will overcome and adapt. So let me go ahead and get this bird on. I don't want to leave that lid open too long uh, Or the temperature will it'll get more air to that fire and it will rise So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on the smoker real quick and uh, we'll check back with you. Stay tuned All right, everybody we are back. I've got the bird resting under this foil um, Give you a little rundown of what I did today uh, we pulled the skin away from the breast meat on this turkey uh, so that I could pull it back carefully without tearing the skin up. Season the breast meat, we put seasoning in the cavity and then of course all around the outside of the, the turkey. Um, as we talked about earlier and you saw, I've got it upside down, breast meat down in this uh, roasting rack and smoked it that way. We kept the temperature between 250 and 275 for three hours. Um, and this is our final product here. I put a good bit of foil over the top of this to kind of tint it. Didn't want to continue cooking, but I knew pulling the, the breast temperature was at 165. The dark meat temperature was at 175, 176. And everything looks really good. I'm going to try to not make a huge mess here and try to get the rack 
off of here and pull the bird off and over onto my pan backs right side up and there we have it this thing tied up real well and I'll clean my hands off real quick and cut into this breast meat we'll see how our little experiment did there's still some butter coming through here and the skin is still cut through which is good it's not uh, and you can see I don't know if you can see um, I'm dripping <laughs> this is the we are dripping a good amount here so I think the experiment was successful I had juice dripping down the knife and uh, as I was cutting through and I am still dripping juice out of this very top piece of breast meat there Wow yep I don't know if you'll really be able to get a good view of this but that breast meat is moist all the way through I mean that is as you saw earlier I mean it was still dripping uh, I'm gonna cut these legs open here see what we've got this side the dark meat typically oh yeah this is the back end at the cavity that is really really good yeah I'm making a mess I've done joints breaking right you can see the moisture in here just dripping away this is a very very moist and juicy turkey here so I think the experience the experiment was a success I've got moisture all the way through into this breast meat no injection no brine just cutting like I said grooves on the inside of this cavity into this breast meat and then using this roasting pan turning it upside down where the butter that I put in there oh wow yeah it is that is some juicy meat all the way through yep that is very nice um, seasoned it up put it upside down in the roasting pan put a stick of butter and some seasoning inside the cavity after like I said I punctured some holes in that membrane on the inside cavity so that some of that butter and juice would would seep through into this breast meat and it is here we go again just to show I mean there's juice all in the skin all in this meat I'm just gonna shred this turkey obviously um, for home use here but I mean it is this is a moist piece of, of white meat here and that's what notoriously that's what the, the reputation is the dark meat stays juicy and moist the white meat dries out well this goes to show you don't necessarily have to brine and inject um, now I think we talked about earlier the injection will get the flavor down in the meat um, the seasoning on top is good it didn't get into the meat so much um, but the juice definitely did so depending on what you're trying to do with this turkey um, you know the, the injection and the brining would do good to get some flavor down in there um, but this is really phenomenal as far, as far as a moisture test uh, I think we hit it hands down there I mean it's still it's got a lot of moisture in that in that white meat so we're in good shape um, again I, I, I started over here but uh, got the uh, turkey on 
uh, cooked from 250 to 275. Uh, put had it in there for three hours upside down and uh, never did cover it um, had a lot of good wood smoke it's a nice golden brown uh, didn't really get too much smoke sometimes they will do that where you'll have to tint some foil over it in the smoker like I did letting it uh, uh, letting it rest but phenomenal the moisture is great flavors good it's got some smoky flavor I did use apple wood chunks um, you know, hickory will sometimes over, over smoke uh, some things, and poultry is really susceptible to smoke flavor. So, I don't really like to use hickory on um, uh, chicken or turkey like that. So, um, and this is a phenomenal product. Um, think about doing that if you're in a rush, or if you if you don't have uh, the brine bags you can get from Walmart. Those big big Ziploc bags um, or if the injection is not really what you're looking for you're, you're wanting to do other things with this turkey meat um, it, it does leave you open for other flavors so um, if you're wanting that Cajun flavor or whatever you can do it on the outside uh, leave the, the white meat um, a, a little more neutral so that you can add it into other things and not have too many flavors going um, but this really did turn out well. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that it was as moist as it was uh, not being injected or brined at all. So that's a really good thing. Um, appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, do the uh, subscribe. I don't know what the heck I'm even talking about. If you like the video please like share and subscribe um, we need the subscribers so that uh, we can update you when we do put out a new video um, but uh, again this was a little bit off track for our simple easy anybody can do backyard cook um, but smoking a turkey it's getting close to Thanksgiving so there's a lot of these out uh, a lot of the, the turkey videos out and this was very simple I mean no brine no injection basically just tied the legs up and uh, turned it upside down in a roasting pan uh, a roasting um, rack and uh, smoked it with a stick of butter and some extra seasoning on the inside and it turned out phenomenal so uh, appreciate y'all viewing and watching and um, if you do have any questions or anything hit me up on Facebook uh, here in the comments below um, Instagram Twitter and uh, thank y'all for watching have a good Thanksgiving